there's a bit of a shortage of krill at the moment because of the, fact <laughs> the factory ships have um, closed down. So, so what can we expect there with krill in the future then? Because obviously krill boilies have been in fashion the last few years. I think they will go. Really? Well, loads. Of, I've been using krill since 1993. Um, there's, there's no substitute for it? No. Not, well, it, we tr- a, friend, a friend of mine um, who has helped me an awful lot, actually, uh, Dr. Malcolm Berry, you will have heard me mention his name before. Um, he's a PhD chemist, uh, formerly from GlaxoSmithKline, um, and he's now uh, running his own business. He's a, he's a clever guy, and uh, he's able to put things in perspective. So he's helped me a lot with, shall we say, calming me down from my enthusiasm and putting things in perspective about why things work. He's, he's helped me understand why things work a little better Um, and he helped me find the shrimp extract that I currently sell which is fantastic flavor that is it's it's unbelievable stuff Um, I mean it's a byproduct of the shrimp farming industry in the Far East Uh, you have to buy it in in one ton lots so I had to go to a friend of mine in the industry who had a a DEFRA license to bring it in because I I no longer have that license when I shut, shut the business down many moons ago when I was a bit poorly, um, about 15, 16 years ago, um, I closed a, a, a big factory unit down and I stopped buying everything in massive bulk. But fortunately, I've kept friendly with an awful lot of people. So if I want to bring some unusual products in, I can make a few friendly phone calls and use other people's licenses to bring well, things well, he's in. He's got this fancy machine, hasn't he, that can, can um, break down all the different compounds within a within a flavor well th- there's lots of people have got those machines you have to go to the laboratories and obviously they had those machines at uh, GlaxoSmithKline and now he's left I can say that so he's not going to get in trouble <laughs> but yeah various things can be tested but but going back to it, Malcolm was he found that shrimp extract so he has to take the credit for that um, but also he, he's helped me um, uh, understand some, some interesting things and put things in perspective about flavors, which we can discuss. Um, you know, at, at any point, we, you know, when when you want. I mean, you know, now if you like. Or no, that's fine. Can, can I just get back to the krill thing? So you were saying that there was one. Was it a South American company that were producing krill? Or was it was it, was that right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> in actual fact, I've got to give credit to a chap called Brian Garner who was an original partner at Nutribates. That's right. Yeah, and he used to buy my flavours. Funny that. He used to work for Nutribates, but he bought my flavours. That happens what more than you might think. Yeah, there you go. Much more than you yeah. might think. You'd be yeah. surprised who buys my flavours, which is why I did the poem. <laughs> which is brilliant. That's why we got you on. We want to hear all this stuff, John. So Brian Garner is chatting to me and he says... He, he comes from uh, St- the Stoke area, and he's an ex-miner. He's a tough character. I wasn't expecting to talk about Brian Garner today, but hey. This is what happens. This is what happens. That's the beauty of the podcast, isn't it? It, it, it certainly <laughs> is, Toby. And um, anyway, he, he rang me up, and uh, he said, oh, can you send me some more, whatever it was. I can't remember what he bought. He used to like the crab flavour. So um, I said, no problem at all. And, and I said, oh, I'm looking to develop a, a new base mix that gets me away from the standard fish meals. And what I'm after is, you know, I've heard on the grapevine there's some really good um, hydrolyzed fish extracts. Uh, people call them pre-digested. It's a nonsensical expression, pre-digested. It's hydrolyzed. So the cell wall's been split with an enzyme reaction and then it's dried. And right. that's things like CPSP90, which is certainly, to use another sort of, you know, analogy, it would be one of the Rolls Royces of ingredients. Mm. So... I was chatting away to Brian and he went, oh, I know where you can get that. I won't do the Stoke on Trent accent because <laughs> I can't. And, uh, and, and he said, you want to contact this guy called Shane Misso from Ocean Proteins. And then this was literally back in 1993. And, uh, and he said, he can get, um, it's called BioCP then. And it comes from Santiago in South America. And he said, but get a look at the krill they do as well. It's mega. It comes from the factory ships down near Antarctica. And it's, it's actually manufactured on board the ships. So I said, oh, God, to have a look at that. So I rang this guy up. And you had to buy a minimum order quantity. So I bought loads of it. And I had the space. And uh, 
that's how I created my original mix, which is exactly the same today, Bio Shellfish. So Bio Shellfish contained krill, and still contains krill, and CPSP90, a lot of it. And so it's very digestible. It's got a unique smell and taste. I and mean, there's 17 ingredients And in you it. sold a liquid krill as well, didn't you? That, like, I did sell a liquid krill in later years when, yeah, it, when it became available. Um, mm. Fantastic. You could buy it um, through a few agents in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and then suddenly I rang up about two. I had these really expensive labels done and I bought a photograph and had these labels done because it was such a great ingredient. And, um, you know, I used to just dispense it exactly as it came in the big vats, put it straight in the bottle. And then I rang up uh, a couple of years ago and asked for some and they said it's not available anymore. And um, I said, well, it must be. What and do you mean, yeah? I got all sorts of stories, uh, but the plant that, that makes it up, um, I don't know the real reason. It, it would be wrong of me to guess, but we'll just assume that it was politically wrong to start harvesting the sea of, of krill. They shut one of the, I do know they shut one of the factory ships down. I think the product is still available, but with very limited distribution. Did you say that krill represented like the, 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 the biggest biomass yeah. in, 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 the ocean. in the ocean? And still does. Well, and they're trying to protect that, they don't. I, th I, think, I think it's become, um, you know, the planet's going green. We wish it would go green. Um, maybe krill, the people that harvest krill don't want to put any further investment into their very expensive harvesting ships, the, the process of it, um, because it isn't, uh, it isn't the thing to do now, Simon. So that will be it then? It would be... Because it can't be replicated or anything, can no. it? It's a, it's a natural ingredient. 